Well, to talk more about this latest version of the Trump administration's travel ban, I want to bring in our panel. Afia Yunus joins us from New York. She's an immigration rights advocate and principal attorney and founder of Yunus Law. Joining us from Houston, Neka Achapu is founder of the African Public Affairs Committee. With us here in our Washington, D.C. studio is Amin Ganja Lizade. He is supervisory immigration attorney at Leruta PLLC. And from Seattle, Ira Melman is media director with the Federation for American Immigration Reform, or FAIR. Welcome to all of you to the show. Afia Yunus, let me start with you. Let me ask you, what do you make of the ban and why do you think it was imposed? Well, it was clear that the first ban was imposed to restrict the entry of Muslims into the country. The president uh, made it very clear in 2015 that he wanted to ban Muslims from coming to the United States. And there's a clear line taking that statement to his policy. What do you make of the president's reason that this is about national security? Well, it doesn't make sense for two reasons. Number one, non-immigrant visa applicants are excluded. So what were the security differences between immigrant visa applications and non-immigrant visa applications? And secondly, if that was indeed the case, then applicants for the waiver from the ban would be able to show that they don't pose a national security threat and come to the U.S. And we've seen over and over again that the waiver process is window dressing. I mean, what do you make of it? I mean, do the people affected by this, do they have any kind of legal recourse at this stage? Um, unfortunately, at this point, it, it's, it's unclear. In the past, um, based on my, mo my own experience, um, individuals have been eligible for certain types of waivers um, with limited success. Um, and I, I would just have to agree with my colleague. Um, it, there's really no basis behind this ban. And um, at this point, there's very little recourse outside of um, some sort of class action suit. Ira Melman, we've just heard there's no basis behind this ban. The president says national security, uh, but we've just heard this is an extension of the Muslim ban, isn't it? Well, first of all, there, is, there was no Muslim ban. Uh, it, these were bans on countries that either harbored terrorists or uh, contributed to terrorism around the world, uh, that were not sharing needed information with State Department officials around the world. Uh, you know, the fact that many of them happen to be Muslim-majority countries does not change the fact that you have governments that are refusing to cooperate, uh, in many cases governments that are hostile to the interests of the United States. I mean, certainly everybody would agree that the government of Iran uh, would take every opportunity to harm the United States if given that opportunity. Uh, so these are prudent national security steps that the administration is taking uh, that have nothing to do with the race or ethnicity or religion of the people who are applying to come to the United States, but rather based on objective circumstances, uh, with, namely that the governments are not doing what is necessary to provide us with the information that, is, that we require to be confident the people don't pose a danger. But if that is the case, Ira Melman, uh, if the uh, Trump administration is taking action against those countries which are believed to harbor terrorists, as you say, that policy is not applied very consistently, is it? Because if we look at some of the other countries where terrorists have indeed come from, if you look at the 9-11 terrorists, they came from Saudi Arabia. There's no restrictions on Saudi Arabia. Well, I, I mean, these are good questions. Uh, you know, I am not privy to the information the State Department is using to make these determinations. Uh, but, you know, there, there are objective standards that are being used. And, you know, I think it's also important to point out that the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Trump administration. Uh, they ruled that the president has broad authority to determine who can come into, into the country and under what circumstances. Uh, and, and so, you know, there is a green light for him to do this. Uh, Neka, Nigeria is affected by this ban. It's Africa's biggest economy, its most populous state. Uh, in fact, the Nigerians didn't even see this coming. Uh, we heard from the foreign minister of Nigeria, Jeffrey Onyema. This is what he had to say. Let's listen. We were somewhat blindsided um, with the announcement of the visa restrictions uh, by, the, uh, by the U.S. And, um, you know, of course, uh, a lot of people back home in Nigeria um, understood it and put different inter interpretations and different spins on it. Um, but it's, um, you know, it's essentially very straightforward. And it was uh, very gratifying uh, uh, to, to, to come here speaking to U.S. officials and to understand uh, more clearly the reasoning. 
And Neka, there is a big Nigerian population here in the United States. In fact, the Boston Globe had an editorial, uh, and it gives us some perspective of the role that Nigerians play in the United States. It pointed out that Nigerians are among the most successful and educated groups in the U.S. 61% hold degrees, and a third of them, a third of the Nigerians in the United States work in health care. Why this ban? What do you make of it? Well, let's face it, this, uh, let's be honest here. This ban is a discriminatory ban, and it's going to affect not just Nigerians, but American families. American families that live here that just happen to have relatives that live in different countries. We have to be proactive about what is going on. It's, it's not about security. It's not about terrorism. It's about discrimination. This administration has been clear about its intention to discriminate against black and brown people. And the community here in Houston is going to be greatly affected. Uh, what happened with the Iranian community is similarly going to happen here in Houston, given the amount of people that are here. And we really need to uh, focus and find a voice, because I feel that the African community in general has not been able to really expand and be represented. Uh, so it's important to find out, it's important to have our community get together in this moment against this family separation. This, this, this is just awful. Ira Melman, I'm just kind of wondering how this ban would work, because if it is, uh, you know, if these countries pose a threat to United States national security, people can still come here as tourists, can't they? Yes, they yes. can come here uh, as the tourists. Yes, the visa so, uh, only affects... Uh, so, uh, I'll get to you, yeah. uh, Neka. Uh, Ira, just, uh, yeah, if you could give us that answer, and I'll get back to Neka. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, certainly, you know, we cannot expect that there's going to be 100% assurance. Uh, you know, we live in a world where there are always dangers. Uh, but, you know, when you are bringing people to live permanently in the United States, it does add an extra layer uh, of security risk because they are here with legal status, and it's not easy to remove people, even if they're subsequently found to pose a threat. And I just want to get back to something that Neko was saying. Yeah. You know, the vast majority, the overwhelming majority of immigrants to the United States today Today are people who are black or brown. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, if, if we wanted to institute discriminatory policies, uh, you know, th they would be much broader than what the president is trying to do right now. Yeah. Uh, this is, really is based on security concerns and the failure of these governments to do what is necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, Nigeria is a country in turmoil. Uh, the government isn't doing a very good job controlling situations within that country, uh, and they're certainly not providing the United States with the necessary information so that we can make determinations about which people are suitable to, to let in and, and which people we really do want to keep out. Yeah, but a sort of theoretical situation I was talking about, if some bad guy wants to do in Nigeria wants to do something bad in the United States, he can just apply for a tourist visa. He, he could. Uh, and look, I mean, the State Department has officials around the world, consular officers, yeah. who do background checks. And, and you know, this is not a 100 percent foolproof process. Uh, but, you know, there are layers of security. Okay. But again, it, it is different having somebody here on a temporary basis versus having somebody here on a permanent basis with the rights of a green card holder. Okay. Neka, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I somewhat disagree with some of the things that he's saying. People are going to be vetted no matter what. So we're not talking about people that are, like, just like you said, student, student, people on student visas could commit terrorist act. Yes, Nigeria is facing some security issues, but that is, not, that is, that is irrelevant. This, American families are going to suffer the consequences of this policy. Afia Yunus, here we have a situation where the United States government has identified these six countries. In fact, they've added this, these six countries to other countries as well. It's a blanket ban. It doesn't differentiate between people. Isn't that sort of collectively punishing everybody for the suspicions that they have? Yes, it is. And, and I think the interesting thing is the Nigerian president wasn't even aware. So the U.S. government claiming that the countries on the list did not provide the information requested and are not cooperating with them is a complete farce because the Nigerian president wasn't even aware. And now you're creating this blanket ban um, that does not look at each individualized application and um, 
allowing people to come temporarily but not allowing them to live here makes absolutely no sense. And I believe Ira proved my point that if you can come here on a non-immigrant visa and come here and study and you can come here and visit Disney World, don't you think that you would um, carry out terrorist activities just as much as if you came here to live here permanently? What would stop you? And secondly, from a legal perspective, it's just as easy to remove someone who has a green card if they've committed a crime than if they are not a green card holder. So the distinction is a complete farce. I mean, go ahead. You want to say? Yes, something? I actually have a point. Um, yeah. I, I just want to encourage the viewers, and including our pan panelists, um, particularly Ira, to look at the raw statistics behind what's going on in the world right now. I think that this uh, national security facade is simply a, a pretense to push the uh, anti-immigration agenda of this administration. For example, when was the last time anyone has ever heard of a Tanzanian, a Sudanese uh, terrorist or terrorist from Myanmar where Muslims are actually uh, the victims of persecution. They're the ones trying to flee Myanmar. Um, Nigeria is a, a staunch ally of ours uh, in, the, in the war on terror. And so what we need to be doing is um, working collaboratively with our allies and not alienating them. As, as you saw, the Nigerian um, government is uh, essentially uh, shocked by this decision. And I think this is the step in the wrong decision. This is actually going to do things that are going to make things worse for security. Um, and we need to be working with our allies and not alienating them. Yeah, Ira, you see the problem in trying to understand this. Yeah, look, I mean, Boko Haram is based in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, you know, if the Nigerian government isn't providing us with the necessary information to determine who might be Boko Haram and who isn't, then we have to deal with it accordingly. Uh, you know, just as the TSA has to screen everybody, uh, but even though the, you know, the, an infinitesimal fraction of people might pose a threat at an airport on any given day. Uh, these are security measures that are necessary because failure to do so can result in a calamity. But Ira, the main victims of Boko Haram are not Americans, they're Nigerians themselves. Well, yes, because they're in Nigeria. Uh, if Boko Haram were in the United States, it, the, then Americans would be the victims. Uh, you know, that's the whole point. We don't want these people coming to the United States if they pose a danger. Why but they're okay to come on business visas? Thank you. I mean, why well, fix something that's not broken? You know, I mean, that, we don't I mean, even have any issues to begin it, with. It's a yeah. very good question. And, you know, the administration was criticized uh, during its first round of travel restrictions by saying, yeah. uh, you know, that we're not even going to allow tourists in. Uh, you, you know, you would think that they would get at least some credit for saying, okay, okay you know, we will allow people on temporary visas, but we're going to prohibit people, at least temporarily, uh, from coming on immigrant visas. Go ahead, Amit, and then I want to get to NECA. Credit just for what? Want. NECA, I'll get to you in a moment. Go ahead. This is, this is a non-starter. This is a non-issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at, I'm, I'm encouraging everyone to look at the statistics. Who are the perpetrators of violence in this country? They're lone wolf terrorists. A lot of them are coming from um, fringe white nationalist movements. We haven't seen immigrants really cause any form of terror attack in recent years. Um, so it's, it doesn't make any sense. I, I'm, I stand by my point. But well, it, simply it actually makes a lot of sense. It means we've been screening people out. Screening people out since uh, previous administrations. It, um, the onus is not on the government, but it's on our uh, this government, uh, the Department of State staff, to vet and screen these individuals to ensure that these are people who they say they are, that they um, pass security screening, and so that they don't cause uh, any any kind of trouble. And I think they've been doing an effective job because, as far as I know, I in recent memory I don't recall any mm -hmm. individuals from any of the travel ban countries or any recent immigrants who have uh, engaged in any sort of nefarious or terror activity. Yeah, in fact, the FBI itself says that the biggest threat in terms of terrorism inside the country comes from right-wing extremists. Absolutely. Uh, Neka, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yes, this administration particularly wants to target black and brown people and is starting to expand not just to Latinx community but African communities. No one can tell me that this wasn't intentional. Um, we're talking about immigrant visas that are being affected, which means that families will not be able to bring in their spouses, their relatives, their mothers, I don't think that grandmas of 82 years old are, you know, Boko Haram members. I don't believe that. And so this ban is baseless. Uh, well, and, and this ban can be lifted very easily if these governments were to begin to cooperate. Uh, countries that have been on this list have been taken off 
uh, because they did decide that it wasn't worth not cooperating. So, you know, if Nigeria wants to be able to send people to the United States, then the Nigerian government needs to do what it needs to do. Yeah, but uh, uh, are there any benchmarks? If they can vet them yeah. for student and visa and business visas, then they can vet them for immigrant visas as well. Okay. It's Af the same problem. Yeah, let me, let me go to Afia Yunus. Uh, Afia, do we know if there are any sorts of uh, criteria that these countries have to meet before the uh, ban is lifted or can be lifted? Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have that information, yeah. and a lot of that was also kept um, kept confidential during the, the Supreme Court case as well, that um, under executive privilege, we don't know what the process is with these countries, what information they were uh, allegedly refusing to provide to the U.S. government, um, and how they're, quote, unquote, not cooperating with us. So it's really left in the dark, and here we are, the American people, um, suffering because of it. There's something else, fear. Uh the United States Supreme Court, uh, Ira talked about this earlier, and uh, the court upheld the travel ban when it was challenged a few years ago. Now activists in Congress are trying to get something called a no ban act, which would in effect limit the president's ability to impose these kinds of restrictions. Uh, do we know what the status of that is or what effect it would have? Yeah, and, and this is really what we need Congress to do, is we need Congress to act. And, and hopefully, the, um, you know, the bill is still in the process and it's still uh, going through the legislative process, but hopefully it would have the impact of uh, restricting the president's ability to uh, carte blanche ban uh, nationals from specific countries. And um, immigration in, uh, in its historically was Congress's um, act. Um, every, the Immigration Nationality Act is an act of Congress, even um, and which was limiting the, the president's power and which was being argued in front of the Supreme Court. And so right now, unfortunately, our recourse, because the Supreme Court ruled in the president's favor, is through Congress. And so I urge everyone watching this to call their congressperson and tell them to pass the No Ban Act. I mean, you work with uh, people looking to change their visas, change their status, et cetera. What's happening out there? Are people confused by this? Is there any sense of panic of what is going on? Absolutely. Um, I actually, I, in fact, I have uh, clients who are Nigerian nationals. Um, I, uh, our phone's been ringing off the hook, as you can mm -hmm. imagine. Um, there is a lot of um, uh, uncertainty on what lies ahead because um, you have a decision one day, then you have either a class action suit or an injunction that reverses a decision, uh, which leads to a very lengthy and complicated appeals process. So a lot of times we're taking things um, one day at a time. Mm. However, we are hopeful that um, the no ban uh, legislation is passed. Um, essentially, that's the beauty of this country. It's checks and balances. And right now, Congress needs to act to ensure that there are checks and balances against the executive branch to ensure that um, these types of discriminatory actions that curtails immigration um, doesn't go on with impunity. Ira, you are the spokesman for an organization that is looking at immigration reform. Would you support that kind of legislation, the No Ban Act? No, I, I mean, first of all, this ba uh, No Ban Act is not going anywhere in this session of Congress in any event. Uh, you know, throughout the course of our history, uh, the courts have granted the president broad authority when it comes to determining who can enter the country and under what circumstances. Uh, so this would be a di diversion from the normal course of events where, uh, you know, this has been largely left up to the executive branch. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it's all a moot uh, point right now because you know, I, uh, it, it's yeah. questionable whether it'll pass the House. It'll certainly not pass the Senate. You know, I, I'll get to you. I mean, uh, Ira, just, you know, uh, I get your point that this has been left to the executive uh, in the past. But if we look at this president, he's made very xenophobic comments. He's made racist comments. He's referred to African countries, I don't want to use the term, but in very derisive terms. Well, look, I, you know, his actions have pre as president have been within the constitutional bounds of his authority. Uh, the Supreme Court said he had the authority to go ahead and do this. Uh, you know, the, the president says and tweets all sorts of things. Uh, but the fact of the matter is our policies are non-discriminatory towards people. Uh, we have the majority of people who come to the United States as immigrants are not white. Uh, you know, they are from places like Asia and yeah. Africa. 
and, and that is going to continue. Nobody is disputing that. Uh, what the president is saying is that we need to have some uh, control over who comes into the United States, and we also need to have the cooperation of these governments so that we can make sure that the people we're admitting don't pose a danger. Yeah, no, all I'm saying is that there must be something of a question mark over the motivation for these bans, given what the president has said in the past. I mean, you want to say something? Well, just because what he, you know, it, yeah. it, it doesn't mean it's not good policy, though. Yeah. Just okay. in response or prudent, or prudent step. to I mean, just because the president no, okay can for it, do it, for him to say that doesn't mean he should do it. I mean, historically, if we want to talk history, mm -hmm. you've got um, atrocious uh, legislation that has curbed immigration, such as the Chinese Exclusion Act, um, a discriminatory um, immigration legislation and practices against um, Irish folks, Italian Americans, um, you name it. It's it's gone on all throughout history. But just because it's occurred and that this administration has the power authority to do it doesn't mean it's right. Um, which is basically why, why Congress should step in at this point um, to, to curtail the, this type of uh, discriminatory practice and these type of discriminatory leg legislation. Um, so uh, all I can say is you know, look to the statistics. Where is the harm? There is no harm coming from these countries. It's completely manufactured. And, um, and you'll see that this is simply a farce. Well, you know, it, it, can I just say, it, Very you know, quickly, we, we yeah. have had the FBI focusing on, uh, you know, the Islamic terrorism within the United States for a long time. They've done an effective job. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it would, you know, it, it is largely abated because we have been fo focusing on it. Uh, we are now focusing also on terrorism coming from white supremacists, which is needed. Yep. Uh, you know, it, it, when you start uh, not paying attention, that's when it can strike you again. Okay, go ahead. The problem is these are all, look, if you look at them, majority of them are homegrown terrorists. Mm -hmm. They're not uh, individuals who've come from right. uh, on permanent uh, residency visas uh, and what have you. These are folks that have been born and raised here. These are blue-blooded Americans who have been radicalized from within. Mm -hmm. So um, that goes back to the basis of uh, rationale. Not, not, okay. You, Sorry, you, know, right, you, you had the, Somal yeah. the Somalis in, in Minnesota. Uh, th these are not entirely homegrown. C can you name any terror attacks? Uh, that have been caused by any immigrants recently or in the past couple of years or even in yeah, previous because administrations? The F because the FBI has been very effective at thwarting them before they happen. Right. So why, why would we need a travel ban then? Yeah. Uh, Neka, I want to move on to something else, and that is it seems with this travel ban that the Trump administration has now placed the burden on these uh, targeted countries. They have to show that they are um, introducing or implementing security measures that could in the future at some point, I guess, get these uh, bans lifted. So let, take a country like Nigeria. I mean, you've written an article in Quartz magazine in which you said that Nigeria is actually partly to blame for this. Uh, can you explain that? How is Nigeria partly to blame for that? Well, I believe that, unfortunately, the government at this point is having issues in ensuring that they know what is going on. Um, something of this nature, a travel ban, is, is something that should have been taken care of a, a, a long time ago. And it just shows the discom this, this communication between the Nigerian government and the U.S. government. Because, because of the diaspora population here, they should have taken care of this. They should have known to be blindsided by, sub blindsided by such a big issue. It's, it shows the disconnect between the U.S. government and the Nigerian government, and it's evident. Afia, I want to give you the last word. What happens now? I mean, we well, find our community. I, I One moment. Go ahead, Afia. Yeah, I, 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 I was saying that we fight it because the interesting thing is in the first Supreme Court case, uh, one of the focuses of the Supreme Court was the fact that there was a waiver. And that somehow made it not discriminatory. And we've seen that over the past three years, um, around 6% of waivers have been approved. And so we see that it was just window dressing. We fight it in the courts. We fight it with Congress. We push to elect members of Congress who stand by the values of our country that we allow for equal opportunity, justice and liberty for all, regardless of your skin color. And those are the members of Congress we elect, and we push the needle towards immigration, because they're a net positive. Right. Neka, there also seems to be a bit of a mixed message coming out of the Trump administration. We just had the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, come back from a visit to Africa. He visited three African countries there, and he talked about growing partnerships, uh, increasing contacts with African countries. 
uh, he comes back, and then we hear an announcement about restrictions on people traveling to the United States. I mean, what are we to make of this? Yeah, and that's the I'm problem. I'm not sure we're, what the We're getting mixed messages, so, and we yeah. also don't know. Uh, we don't okay. know what information they're not giving us. All right, sorry, Neka, go ahead. Well, I don't understand the discrepancy either. Um, on one end, you are visiting African countries showing yeah. support, and on the other one, okay. you are completely disregarding the other by creating this right. situation for for families. I, I, I quite don't understand what the reason behind the yeah. behind this is, okay. other than we the fact that it's just discriminatory. Right, and we've run out of time. We have to go. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arun Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching.